Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are simplifying simple entry. I'm going to show you how to uh, do note entry in simple entry using just the computer keyboard, if your computer keyboard is an extended keyboard with a number pad. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do uh, when we set up simple entry is to make sure that the keyboard shortcut set is set correctly. Uh, in this case, we're using an extended keyboard, so we want to make sure that that's uh, correct. So choose the simple entry tool. Go to the simple menu, choose simple entry options. <coughs> at the bottom, choose edit keyboard shortcuts. And again, at the bottom where it says keyboard shortcut set, just make sure that default shortcut table is set and not laptop, all right? This will allow the uh, simple entry to be conducive to using the number pad as opposed to uh, uh, the um, a regular laptop keyboard, okay? Which doesn't have one. Um, so once we're here, first thing we're going to want to do is put the cursor in the right place. In this case, it's already here in the first measure, but if we wanted to start entering notes somewhere else, we would press the option key and just click in any measure, and we can get around to the point where um, if we want to start entering notes somewhere else, all right? Um, alternatively, once we are in a place, command right will move over a measure, command left will move over to the left of the measure, and then command down and up we'll move uh, between steps, all right? Once we're where we want to be, uh, we can start entering notes. And the first thing we're gonna do is choose a rhythm. And you can see this little table here, this is representing the number pad for both Mac and Windows. For rhythms, they're pretty much the same. Um, five is a quarter, six is a half, seven whole, eight double whole, and then eighth notes going the other way for four, three sixteenth, two thirty second, one uh, sixty fourth. And it does say zero one twenty eighth, but um, to get a, a 128th note, it's, it, we can't actually use the zero on the uh, number pad. I'll show you that in a second, all right? So all we have to do is choose, uh, press one of those keys, so five for a quarter note. And uh, once we have that, we can just press the return key or the enter key, and that will enter the note at the uh, pitch that I have that cursor. And you can move that cursor up and down with the up and down arrow, shift up will jump you an octave, shift down will jump you down an octave, all right? Return or enter, just like that. And um, <coughs> we can choose other rhythms, so four if we wanna start entering some eighth notes, okay? And uh, there is another way to choose a rhythm not using the number pad. We can actually use the numbers in the main part of the keyboard above the letters with command option shift and one of the numbers. So command option shift five, will give me a quarter note, six for half, etc. I don't know why you'd want to use this because <laughs> that's a lot of keystrokes when you can just press the one key on the uh, number pad, but that option there is there and exists. The one uh, advantage to this is that we can use the zero for 128th. So in order to get the 128th uh, carat in this manner, we do have to do command option shift zero, and that will give you your 128th note if you want to use that. Otherwise, any of the numbers in the number pad plainly will just give you the rhythm, and that's pretty easy, all right? And again, enter return, will enter, enter or return will give you the note at carrot pitch. And alternatively, we could use the letters A through G on the keyboard to give us the notes A through G. So if we choose quarter note and press A, we'll get an A. Uh, eighth note, B, C, etc. And it's fairly easy to enter notes this way. <coughs> and you can see how it, you, using this me method, you can sort of almost type the notes into Finale. If you get really fast at this, you, you know, you can kind of fly with your right hand on the number pad and the left hand um, on those letters A through G, all right? And uh, one thing to note about this is that the position of the cursor has a little bit to do with where the note goes. So right now you can see the, the cursor is on the A. So if I were to enter a D, it's going to want to put the D closest to the cursor. So we'll always put the D in this case above the A and not below. All right, it's always going to go to the point that's closest to where the cursor is. So it does matter a little bit where that cursor is. So if I wanted to enter that E above where I've got my cursor on the G now, I'd, I would have to move up a little bit to get a little closer. If that makes sense. All right. Um, once we have a note in there, we can add intervals. And this will be the numbers in the number row above the letters without any modification. So one through eight will give us uh, a unison through an octave above the pitch. So I've got the A highlighted right now because I just entered it. So if I press three, I'll get a third above that. And now the C becomes highlighted. So if I press another number, it will go above that. So if I press three again, I'll get the E, all right? 
and you can get a ninth using Command Shift Nine. All right, plain nine will not work because that serves a different function, um, but Command Shift Nine will give you an oct uh, an octave and a second or a ninth. All right, and we can get intervals below as well using Shift and one of the numbers. So Shift one through nine now will give us unison unisons through uh, ninths below. All right, so Shift four. And then from here, shift three, shift three. We can get an A major chord, okay? And finally, one final way to enter, actually there's two other ways. Another way to enter intervals is once you have the note, you can press shift and, an, and a letter. So shift C, for example, will give me the C above, shift E, all right? And again, this will be somewhat relative to the note that's highlighted. So again, if I were to enter an E here, Shift A <coughs> would give me the A above, not the A below, because the A above is closer, right? So it, it is a little uh, relative in that manner as well. And I said there's one final way to do this. Once you have a note entered, if you move your cursor to the, the note that you want added, so let's say I want the C sharp added here, we can use Command Enter or Command Return, and that will add that pitch to the to that pr that note you just um, entered at the carrot pitch, if that makes sense. So again, Command Enter will give me the E in that case. All right. So that is intervals. Rests. There's several ways to do rests. It's actually kind of silly. <laughs> uh, so first, choose the rhythm of the rest that you want. So let's say we're going to enter eighth rests. Choose the four for eighth note. And there's many options here. If we use the zero on the number pad, we'll get a rest, right? Not the zero um, in a number row. Actually, no, it is either. That's right, it's either. Zero on, on either the number row or the number pad will give us a rest, all right? Option enter will also give us a rest. Option return will give us a rest. <laughs> and there's more. Shift enter will also give us a rest. Shift return. I did that backwards, will also give us a rest. And finally, tab will <laughs> give us a rest. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways to enter a rests in this manner, okay? And just in case that wasn't enough, there is one final way. If you have a note entered, let's say we enter an A there, and we want to turn that note into a rest, we can use the R key, and it will turn that note that you just entered into a rest. So a, a seventh way to enter a rest, really, all right? And incidentally, if you press R again, you'll get a pitch again, but it will always be in the middle, middle of the staff. So R will actually toggle between a note in the middle of the staff and a rest, all right? Um, and if you have a rest, incidentally, if you move your uh, cursor to a pitch that you want to turn that rest into a note, we can do that with Command Return or Command Enter, all right? So Command Return will turn that rest into an eighth note. Again, R will toggle it back to a rest. If I move down to the G, Command Enter will turn that into a G, all right? Lots of different ways to, to make rests and then turn rests back into notes, all right? Uh, to delete notes, obviously just use the delete key and we'll start going backwards. And you notice that the, you know, the, the in this case, the eighth rest is highlighted, press delete, it gets removed, right? Now, if we were to arrow over to some other notes, let's say we're gonna, arrow over to this one and if I were to press to leave from here it's gonna move beats three and four over right so it's sort of um, it's not turning that into a rest it's just uh, deleting that all right and we can um, arrow over and just delete as we need to right it will, it will always it will always delete whatever is highlighted that is the key great and then we can get back to the carrot that way uh, if we delete all the way to the beginning all right um, let's enter some dotted notes, all right? So if I were to enter a quarter note here on A, it's easy to get an, a dotted quarter note. Just press the period key. You can enter another note here. Or the dot on the number pad will do the same thing, all right? So that is dotted notes. Um, and then we can get what I would call a sticky dot, which means that uh, we'll have the dot highlighted and we can enter as many... Um, dotted notes as we want. So I'm going to use the, the uh, compound 6-8 that I have over here because this is a, a good use for this. So if we choose 5 for quarter note and press shift period. Now this will only work with a period in the main part of the keyboard. It will not work with a dot in the number pad. So shift period um, will 
you'll see in the in the simple entry palette now that now the period is highlighted. If I press shift period again, it will get unhighlighted, right? Shift period will turn it back on. So what this is going to do is that once I start entering notes, they're all going to be dotted quarter notes, all right? And I'd call that sticky dots because it's it's you know, it's making the uh, entry um al always be dotted, right? And again, shift period will unsticky it, right? So now it's just plain quarter notes, all right? So that's dots and sticky dots. Um, ties. Ties are fairly easy, too. Let's enter a note here, A. And then once we have the note entered, you can press the T key for tie, and you'll get the tie, and then you can enter another note. All right, easy as that. Uh, alternatively, uh, let's enter an E there. We can use the slash above the number pad to get the tie as well. And incidentally, this the slash or the T will toggle them on or off, right? So if you decide that you, oh, I didn't mean to tie it, just hit it again, and it'll turn it off, all right? Um, so we can do that and then enter some more notes. And then interestingly, if you have a couple notes, uh, and you forgot to, to tie on the first note, we can tie backwards from the second note using shift T. And again, shift T will toggle it on and off. Or command slash above the number pad will do the same thing for a backwards tie, okay? So shift T and command slash in the number pad for backwards tie. We can also do um, sticky ties as well. Uh, and this could be useful if you have a, a string of whole notes, for example. So let's uh, get to the whole note rhythm, which is seven. And if we use command shift T, you'll notice in the simple palette that the, the tie now gets highlighted. And again, command shift T will unhighlight it. So we'll toggle that on and off. And once it's highlighted, when we enter a note, it will automatically have the tie. And then we can enter another, we'll get another tie and another, et cetera, until we press command shift T to un uh, stickify that tie <laughs> and then enter a final uh, whole note that way. All right, so that's command shift T or alternatively option slash above the number pad will do the same thing. And we get the, uh, the tie highlighted there and we can do the same thing. And then option slash to unsticky it. All right, so that's sticky ties. Um, let's see, how about accidentals? Let me just delete some of this, get this out of here. Oops. Start on a fresh bar. Go back here. Uh, accidental. So let's enter a D. Um, accidentals are fairly easy. Above uh, or to the right of the number row, so this is the main part of the keyboard, um, the equals and the minus will give you a sharp. For e equals was sharp, minus will give you a flat. All right? Equals sharp, minus flat. N will turn it back to a natural. Okay? And if I were to enter an F, for example, and press N, you'd actually see that turns it into a natural, right? And uh, let's see, shift equals will give you a double sharp, or shift minus will give you a double flat. And you can always go back to natural with the N key, okay? And there's another way to do this. In the number pad only, the plus and minus keys will raise or lower by a half step what it, where, from wherever you are. So we've got a D natural here. If I were to press plus, I'd get a D sharp, plus again, D double sharp, and we can actually keep going all the way up to seven sharps, if you, for whatever reason, want to write something with seven sharps. And again, minus will flatten it by a half step continuously until we get back to natural, and then flats, double flats, triple, all the way to seven flats, and then it will stop. All right, so that's plus and minus in the number pad section of the keyboard. Um, we can do what I would call sticky sharps and sticky flats, and only sticky sharps and sticky flats. Uh, actually, we can do sticky naturals and plus and minus half steps, but with keystrokes, there's only option equals and option minus. Again, this is the equals and minus um, next to the number row in the main part of the keyboard, and that will toggle uh, uh, sharps and flats off. So if I were to press option plus, you notice that the sharp gets highlighted now in the uh, simple entry palette. And any note that I enter will be sharp. The C, you know, is going to be sharp anyway because it's in the key. But D will get a sharp, E, F, G, etc. A sharp. All right. 
And again, option equals will turn that sharp off. And then option minus will give me a sticky flat. So now we can enter all flats if we want. All right. And that would be sticky sharps and flats. We can get a sticky natural, but we don't have a, a keyboard shortcut for it. But we can actually just click in here and press that, and that will highlight. And now all of my notes will be natural no matter where they are, right? In this case, it's really only the C, F, and G that get affected in this key signature, right? Um, and again, to get rid of it, we do have to use the mouse to undo that. And the plus and minus half right here is, is another interesting way to do this. If I were to press the plus half step, right, and highlight that so we're getting a sticky plus half step, and start entering notes now, we'll get a, sh oh, let me go down a little bit. We'll get a sharp, B sharp, C double sharp because it's a half step above where it would be in, in the key signature. See, that's the difference between a sticky sharp and a sticky plus half. It really depends on the key signature in this case, right? F double sharp uh, to get a half step above the F sharp in the key signature, right? And then the same thing can be done with the sticky minus. So we'll uncheck that and check that. And now we'll get A flats and, and G naturals and F naturals, right? But E flat. D flat, C natural, B flat, and A flat. All right. Uh, so that's uh, a couple ways to do that. Again, there's no keyboard shortcuts for the natural plus half or minus half accidental sticky version of that. All right. But they are available for you to uh, use to just select it with a mouse. All right. So that is accidentals. Uh, grace notes, fairly easy. Let's enter a eighth note here. We'll enter an eighth note A. Once you have the note entered, just press Option G. And that will turn it into a grace note. And there you go. And easy enough. All right. Option G turns it into a grace note. And we can do sticky grace notes as well with Command G. Command G. And you notice that the grace note gets highlighted here. And now any note we enter, uh, let's enter uh, eighth note, grace notes, will all be grace notes until you press Command G again to unhighlight that there. And now the note will be normal. And we're good to go. All right, so that's grace notes and sticky grace notes. Option G and Command G, okay? And finally, let's talk about tuplets. In order to enter a tuplet, a tuplet in this manner, the we want to enter the, uh, the note first uh, with the rhythm of the tuplet that we want. So if we want an eighth note triplet, for example, we're going to enter the eighth note first. Oh, enter the note, there we go. Um, eighth note A, and then press 9. And this could be either 9, either in the number row or the number pad. And once we press 9, it will start the triplet for us, and then we can finish it with pitches, and we're good to go, right? So if I were to choose uh, 5 for a quarter note, and enter my quarter note now, and then press 9, you'll see that it creates a quarter note triplet, right? So we'll always uh, enter the, the triplet based on... Um, the, the first rhythmic value that you enter, okay? We can do uh, sticky uh, triplets, too, with Command-9. So if you're here with a cursor and you press, uh, let's go to eighth notes, Command-9. And, of course, the, the triplet will now get highlighted in the simple entry palette, which means that from here on out, everything will be a eighth note triplet. And we can enter triplets pretty quickly like this, all right? And again, Command-9 will unhighlight that and get unstickified. Now what if we don't want triplets? Triplets will be the, the default tuplet that is activated uh, in, in simple entry until you redefine it. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if we want a different type of tuplet, let's say for example we want uh, 5 sixteenths in the space of 4 sixteenths, right? So we're going to start this the same way we would. So we'll start with a sixteenth note, enter that, and instead of 9 we're going to use option 9. And again either 9 will work. And we're going to get the simple entry tuplet definition box. Now this is going to allow us to dictate to Finale what kind of tuplet we want to enter. So in this case, we want to use 5 sixteenths in the space of 4. And it says use current here, which just means that it's going to use the current value of the note that you just entered, so which is fine because we want si uh, 16th notes and we entered a 16th. So press 5 in the space of 4. Use current is fine. Click OK. And now we've just created a five tuplet. All right. And we can create any kind of tuplet we want that way. 
And you did see that the, there's the, the use current, but let me show you something else. If I were to enter a uh, quarter note here, and I would press option nine to start a triplet. Now if I use three use current in the space of two use current, it's gonna create a quarter note triplet, right? Because I entered the quarter note first. But what if we want that swing rhythm that's quarter note, eighth note, uh, under a, a, a single bracket. So it's essentially an eighth note triplet starting with a quarter note. So in this case, you know, we started with a quarter note, but what we could do is do three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes. And despite the fact that we're starting with a quarter note, it will create an eighth note triplet, right? We're forcing Finale to create an eighth note triplet. You click OK, and you'll see that the only thing left to, to add to that triplet is now the other eighth note, all right? So that's how you would do that um, that uh, swing uh, quarter eighth triplet uh, type of notation in this way. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to point out about tuplets. Um, so let's say we're going to start a tuplet here and use option 9 to get to this dialog box. There's one other option here, save as default simple entry tuplet definition. All right. So let's say, for example, I want to use, uh, I want to create that five tuplet thing. So let's do five use current in the space of four use current, all right? If I were to check save as default simple entry tuplet definition, all right, click on that. Now the first thing it's going to do is going to create that five tuplet. In this case, I, I guess I created a five tuplet eighth, uh, eighth note rhythm. It's fine. Do A, B, C to get the five tuplet. Now, if I were to start again, and without using option nine, if I just press the regular nine to launch the regular tuplet, it's going to launch that new five tuplet that I defined as the default. All right. So this can be handy if you're, uh, you know, entering a, a slew of, d of, of uh, tuplets that you want to be the same because you can actually, now with this, you could actually use Command-9 to um, use a sticky tuplet. And I could, as you see, just create a slew of these um, five tuplet eighth notes, right? Until I command nine to get rid of the uh, sticky tuplet nature of it, right? So this could be handy. I, I did want to show you a practical purpose for this. Um, this is handy with that swing rhythm again, right? So if we enter that uh, quarter note, option nine to redefine this simple entry tuplet definition. So now we're going to use, again, three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes, right? And this will disregard that quarter note that starts because I'm not using use current. I'm using eighths to define the triplet, right? Save as default. Click OK. And the first thing it's going to do is create that tuplet. And then again, from here, we can even use this, the uh, sticky tuplet again. So Command-9. Again, start with a quarter note. Eighth note. Quarter note. Eighth note. So we can enter a nice slew of uh, swing tuplets this way using uh, you know, using the, the option nine to redefine that tuplet and then command nine to make a sticky tuplet, all right? So that'll make short, uh, quick work of your swing rhythms in, in simple entry, all right? Um, so that's it, I think I, I covered it. Oh, one final thing I wanted to mention about those tuplets and that, that d default definition that I, that I just uh, showed you. That definition will stay with the program as long uh, uh, until you change it. So if you quit Finale and come back a week later, this tuplet will still be defined as the default tuplet. So anytime you press 9, you would get this tuplet no matter what, all right? Just be careful with that because uh, you might get confused when you try and enter a triplet and all of a sudden you've got this, like, you know, 5 tuplet 16th note or something, whatever it was that you were working on last. So, all right. Um, so I covered triplets, grace notes, accidentals, ties, dotted notes, rest intervals, and notes, of course. So covered a lot. Uh, hope you, hopefully you've learned a lot about how to use simple entry with a computer keyboard. And uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you soon on the next video.